Hi guys, Kai Draws here, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I hope you decide to stick around, and let's get into this video. For a bit now, I've been getting some requests to do a few different tutorials, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm still very new to explaining my art process and breaking down what I do, so I'm going to be doing my best here to try to explain to y'all how I go about drawing. I plan on doing more tutorials in the future, but for now I want to stick to something more broad before I hone in on different things like shading skin, hair, drawing different parts of the face, etc, etc. Saying that, disclaimer, I'm only a first year art student with limited experience in drawing, so just keep in mind this is how I go about things. There's more than one way to do things, but this is just how I like to do it. And I'm going to be walking you through my entire art process. This includes thumbnailing, color picking, collaging, sketching, and of course, painting. What I'm showing on screen right now is my thumbnail phase. The reason this phase in particular is so important is because of a little something called composition, and it saves a hell of a lot of time. Have you ever started sketching and you realize the character looks off in relation to the background, or maybe the pose is odd and you don't really vibe with it? Then you have to go back and restart the entire thing, losing like two plus hours of work and you're like, God damn it, this sucks. Or maybe you're stuck on ideas, like you know you want to paint or draw like something, you know, like a witch or whatever, but you don't know how. That's where thumbnailing is here to save you. So before coming on screen, I did a bunch of traditional thumbnails, all very quick pen sketches, and slapped my four favorites on screen to add value to them. I think I actually started out with uh, maybe like anywhere between 7 to 10 of them. And yeah, so here in this part of my drawing process, I'm blocking in values and shades to see where my foreground and background will be, where my shading and highlights are going to be, and just blocking in the basic values of the piece so that I can choose which one I like best whether I like it more for the composition, the lighting, the mood it creates, and all that good stuff. The reason why I really think thumbnailing is important is because one, it saves time, and two, you can get a bunch of fast ideas that you can build off of later for a full illustration. Rather than just limiting yourself to one idea, you're giving yourself a bunch to work with, and it makes you think more about the feeling you want to portray in your piece. It makes you try out ideas that you otherwise would have maybe not thought of because you didn't give yourself time to think. And that's kind of what thumbnails do. They're, they're quick ideas that really just give you that extra time and let you experiment before you get into the finalized part. And it's just because it's so loose, it's so easy to work with, you know? This next step that I'm moving into is my collaging phase. I'm going to tell you this right now, references are your best friend. They are honestly the best time saver and can help you get an idea and mood and pose down so fast. It's... Use a reference! It's not cheating. I, I promise you, no matter what anyone tells you online, using a reference is not cheating. It's okay. It, sometimes you don't remember what a leg looks like or what a hand looks like. I'm gonna- I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, they encourage you to use references in art school when you're doing character design, when you're doing environment design, when you're working on illustrations, when you're doing paintings, use a goddamn reference. It's not cheating, and anyone who wants to tell you is cheating can come talk to me, cause I'll fight them. Anyway, I had a mood board on Pinterest I made just for this, and I chose the references that I thought would be most fitting to the piece like the pose references, color references, and facial reference. I started out with, I think, around 32 different pins on the board and just collapsed it down to these images here. And throughout the entire painting, I referred back to this collage. Everything from my drawing phase to my sketch phase to my painting phase. Just to remember what I was trying to achieve here, which is really a witchy, spooky mood for Halloween. And color picking. Honestly, this one may seem to be the most tedious out of them all, if you already have a color scheme in mind and a solid idea of what you want, then you can probably skip out on this step, but it's still an important step if you maybe don't have a strong idea and need to fiddle around with it a bit. I know like if you watch my old speed paint Kona Coffee, I go through like 10 different color schemes just for her hair. So like if you're really unsure of what you want, this is a really good step to use. So I chose the composition I wanted for this piece from the thumbnails I did earlier and I went over it with color. To do that, I just put an overlay layer over the drawing and I started to paint over it with a soft airbrush. To deepen the shadows, I made another layer and used a multiply layer. I can't tell you what color exactly I chose to use for the multiply shading because I swap between blues and purples depending on the color scheme. Once you get a good feel for it though, you'll know if it's better to use a warmer or cooler shadow for the piece. 
just a little tidbit to help you with that, but typically if your light source is a warm color, you're going to want to use a cool color to shade and vice versa. So for my orange color scheme, I chose a blue for the shading because it's a warm, cool contrast, and typically that's what you'll see in color theory and so many other skin shading videos. And then to get the glowy effects, I just made another layer and set it to color dodge. Up next we have sketch phase. So to start out, I have my original thumbnail pulled up for reference that I can look back on so I can really capture that idea in my sketch. I don't have much to say about this part of my process since it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm referencing from my thumbnail as well as the, my collage slash mood board I made for the piece, so it makes sketching 2000% easier because my basic idea is just poof, right there. And it's, it's just so easy to build off of when you have those two references already in mind, you're not pulling from imagination, and you just, bam, it's right there, you can use it. I will say though, sketches aren't going to look perfect. I remember when I first started doing speed paints, I would actually get anxious while drawing because I was thinking, oh god, oh god, the sketch, it's so bad, all my subs are seeing this, I'm a disgrace. And so if you look at some of my speed paints, you'll just see me like starting with base colors and you don't even get to see my sketch process at all or even my line art process when I do do like chibis or um, like more comic book style stuff back in the day and in reality sketches aren't gonna look good they're sketches your first time through probably isn't going to be a masterpiece and that's perfectly okay I went through three different sketch renditions, going from a skeleton sketch to a more detailed skeleton sketch, and then to something I could actually work with and paint off of. So really there's no shame if your sketch doesn't look as fabulous as you want it to at first. Most of my sketches start out looking like shit as you can see here, it's literally just a bundle of shapes that work off of each other. But the most important thing is to just push through that feeling of, oh shit I'm a failure, and keep sketching. Keep working at it until you're satisfied with it and you feel like you can work off of it. Go through 10 layers if you gotta, that's okay. We all have different ways of working. Maybe sometimes you'll get it right on the first try or the first few tries, maybe sometimes you won't. And that's okay, that's just something to work with and be aware of. Your sketches aren't going to be perfect. Sometimes they will, most times they won't, and that's fine. Don't give up on a sketch just because at the moment you think it looks bad. If I did that, I would not have produced the last three pieces I've done because every time the sketch starts out looking like a piece of crap and it doesn't even look human. One thing I learned in art school and have been pushed to experiment with more is incorporating my sketch into my drawing. And if you watch any artist out there like Ross Draws or Wallop, W-L-O-P, I don't really know how to pronounce his name, you'll notice that they don't completely get rid of their sketch. They keep it in and they work with what they have, and if they don't like a line, they'll paint over it or erase it so the drawing is more cohesive. I think that's a problem a lot of younger artists have, and I myself was guilty of it. But don't be afraid to keep your sketch and just work with it. I've started doing that in my more recent pieces and I feel like it's made a difference in my paintings and makes them look a lot more complete. So right now I'm going to slow it down here just a little bit to explain something with my sketch. My sketches almost always go above my color layers, and even though I prefer sketching in black and white, working with a black sketch isn't the best idea. So what I do is I create a clipping layer above my line art, and I color over it with a reddish hue. Afterwards I set the sketch layer to multiply, and I begin adding some soft values. This will be important later in the piece as I start coloring because it makes the shadows a lot richer, which is part of the reason I like to keep my sketch layer throughout the entire painting. And now we're moving into the actual painting process itself, and here is where explaining becomes a little tricky for me, just because I feel like there's so much about painting to go over and really break down. I can tell you though the order I like to paint. I always start out with my focus subject, in this case the witch, blocking in my base colors. Thankfully I don't have to think too much about shading and values because most of it is already on there for my sketch layer. The one thing I will absolutely 100% recommend is checking your values throughout your piece. To do that, you can turn your image black and white to double check if your lightest lights and darkest darks are in the correct areas. I'll make another video on how to do that in the future because it can be done on multiple art programs and explaining it can be a little tedious and we're already running short on time in this video. 
Regardless though, checking your values throughout your piece will help you a lot. So after I get my base colors down, I start moving into shading. I usually begin uh, with a warmer hue, which can be seen with my sketch layer. And then I'll move into colder hues, especially for this piece since the purple is just so bright and warm. And I don't like focusing on like the face and then the hair and then uh, the dress. What I usually like to do is I like to focus on all of them at the same time. So I'll add a little detail to one part, add a little detail to another part, add a little detail to another part. And that way I'm not focusing too much on one piece and that way it doesn't look like one piece is more finished than another part because that can make your piece look a little bit discombobulated, it doesn't really fit well. It's just this pattern of putting a little detail here, putting a little detail there, zooming out, taking in the whole scene and seeing, okay, what can I do here? what colors can I add, you know, where does it need to be darker, where does it need to be lighter. So I always, always, always will start out with just shading the darker hues. I don't like adding highlights and brighter skin tones too early. I prefer to just get all the darker stuff down because as soon as you have that dark stuff down, it's easier to add the light. So that's why you see me fiddling around a lot right now with more of the darker value in the piece. There's not really any variation in terms of lighter hue, there's just, you know, the dark hue and the mid-tone. But now, since I added the orb, I am now adding more lighter colors, I'm adding pinkish variants so that it, you know, makes sense. The light source is pink, so of course there'd be pink highlights. Like, for example, with the skin, you or even with the dress like the skin you don't want to just use like a, a lighter yellow or make the color of the skin more white and then use that as a highlight because the fact of the matter is your light source isn't white light it isn't yellow light unless you know you're drawing with your light source being the sun or something but in this case since my light source is very very purple it makes more sense to have a purple purplish highlight on the dress the hair and the skin. And now I'm moving into the background because I was getting irritated looking at the piece. It just felt very funky having my witch just covered in, like, just surrounded by white. It felt very odd to me, so in order to get further with the piece, I blocked in the base, basic colors of the background. And so it's the same process, adding a little detail here, adding a little little detail there, zooming out, taking in the whole picture, and seeing what fits and what doesn't and what needs to be tweaked. That's really the whole thing with painting, is not being afraid to change your drawing. Like, sometimes you feel really, really, really attached to your drawing. You're gonna feel attached to it. You've worked really hard on it, but the fact of the matter is, is if something looks funky, don't be afraid to change it up. That's like the entire thing with art. Anything can be changed, no matter what, no matter what stage you're at you can definitely go in and change it. Sorry if that was a little muddled, that was completely unscripted as I'm watching this video while I paint. I don't really have much else to say because if I want to teach any of these really glowy effects and how I got this, I would have to break it down into another video since this one, this one is definitely just a broad scape of what I do. So if you guys want to see anything else, like if you want me to go more into detail on how I do glowy effects, how I plan out my backgrounds, if you guys want me to go more into detail on my thumbnailing, on my traditional thumbnailing, on my digital thumbnailing, or you know any of that kind of stuff, if you guys want me to go more in depth on it and create side videos to supplement this so that I can go more into detail and share more about my art process, please feel free to tell me. Like if you want a tutorial on hair, skin, thumbnailing, all that good stuff, glowy effects, just leave it in the comments below. I'll take all of it into consideration. I think that I'm at a point now where I can give tutorials and I'm comfortable doing it. So yeah, I mean, if, if you guys have anything in mind that you'd like to learn from me, please let me know. I would love to share some information with you guys. And it looks like that is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you pick something up, maybe learn something that can help you in your art process. Only announcement that I have is my birthday is coming up. It's going to be on November 9th and I'm gonna be doing a little surprise thing for that. Not anything too big, it's not gonna be a giveaway or an art raffle or anything, but just something that's a little fun to take part in. And so yeah, keep an eye out on Instagram for that if you are interested. And as always, stay artsy.